We started here in this beautiful building that was renovated by the Italian government for Bethlehem municipality to encourage tourism to come to the heart of the old city. Bethlehem gets traditionally pilgrims um, and rarely do they stay here in the heart. Um, the numbers are bigger, they're group based um, and it was a big challenge. The restaurant, we were the first and I think only restaurant in Palestine that did service of a set menu, a four-course menu of Palestinian modern food. The menu changed every morning. I walked in every morning with the produce from the market and we designed the menu of the day. The magic of this place was created thanks to the team, the artisans, the shops around us, the farmers, the producers, and it just made sense. It took a lot of time. And then when we started seeing the success of the reputation, it just encouraged us to go more and more and, and perfect things and learn from our guests what to change. And it was a beautiful experience. I was thinking of telling you one day here, but I, I can't because every day was special. There's none of them that was not special. We managed in Bethlehem to attract people of all walks of life, people of all different countries, people that were interested in the Palestinian reality, people who were just on holidays, people who were here for the food. And then we were lucky to get a lot of interest in what we were serving, the food, the ballet of dishes coming in and out and, and the quality of the service. But that happened thanks again to the team. We started training people and then slowly it just happened and it trolled and, and we were directed in the right direction. Um, I'm very lucky to have had fabulous support from people all over. From my family, from friends, from colleagues, from chefs, from Palestinian personalities, from pe personalities from elsewhere. And I can remember now in my ears the voices of all these people and even the customers who complained because I undercooked the meat and because I, they didn't like my interpretation of some Palestinian dish. I, I just want to thank all of, all of these people because you all made it happen. And the pandemic happened. We closed down, like everywhere, all over the world, except that we're in a country where the economy doesn't allow for us to be supported. I managed to keep my team for a while after we closed down, but then I couldn't. And today, when I see that the world is reopening and we're still closed, we're still struggling with the situation, we're still struggling with the prospect of reopening. I just feel so sad and broken. Broken because it took a lot of hard work. It took a lot of trial and error. Um, I, I showed you earlier the, the space and how beautiful it is, but also how two years of closure make a difference. I say two years, but it's a bit less. And the kitchen. For me, the kitchen is the essence, because that's where I worked most, but I worked a bit all over. And 
that, that door, and just looking at the restaurant door and looking at the restaurant. This was a place where I felt that when a guest asked a waiter or a waitress, can we see the chef? And I'd come out and we'd start talking about Palestinian food and they wouldn't know much about Palestinian food or, or some would know a lot. And then that would evolve into a discussion about everything. And I would feel the happiest when they would say, well, can we come to the market with you tomorrow? Because I think food, hospitality, are the two most important ways to tell our story. But I also feel that creating a space that was special, because it was, and it is, and it will always be, was also creating something massive in Bethlehem. We're the tiniest accommodation in Bethlehem. There's 12 rooms. We're, I think, the smallest restaurant in the city. But we managed to have the world speak about us. Today, I, it's difficult to be able to be here and see the state we're in, um, see how challenging it is, see that the prospects are tough. We don't really know what's going to happen in terms of tourism coming back. We don't really know what's going to happen in terms of our situation. We don't own this place and therefore there are expenses that are not within our control. But again, I, I, I just my mind goes and comes now talking to you and I just remember all the events I'm just gonna you know break you know, you see like a film of, of everything that was happening, from the music concerts in the back, to film screenings, to art exhibitions. We hosted French chefs and British chefs and Maltese chefs and Norwegian chefs and Swedish chefs and, you know, chefs from all over. We hosted the Italian First Lady. We hosted Mohammed Hadid. We hosted food critics, so many of them, I, I, I can't even name all of them, uh, but they all became friends. And I think this is what the Hosh was about, it was about being genuine, being true, and creating this real bond. We had in Bethlehem, an opportunity. And I think we, we created a gastronomic destination out of Fowler and Harsarian. We created something that I always dreamt of creating for Bethlehem. A place where people can come and stay, eat well, and make memories. Make memories, you know, when I read or listen to the messages sent to us by people who stayed with us or had dinner with us or lunch with us, I, I don't realize the impact until I, I see those messages where people say what, we, what, what that experience did to them. Um, for the ones that heard a lot of truths about Bethlehem, about Palestine, to the ones that experience something very personal here, whether gastronomically, whether personally. But we also had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun cooking. We had a lot of fun serving people. We had a lot of fun really sharing something from us to people. I hope that will be back soon. Because this place has such a meaning to me. It, it really reflects 
a lot about what Palestinians can do and how Palestinians can excel. We're not better than any other restaurant. We're not better than any other guest house. But we just have maybe the right recipe to make it work. We believed, and we still believe, in, in the values. But we also believe that it's our duty, everybody's duty, to be respectful of the mission of this place when it was first created and which we kept, which is encouraging people to come and stay in Bethlehem and discover Palestinian identity. It pains me to, to be talking to you today like this because we've been trying to find solutions. We've been trying to see how we can get life back and how we can get those ovens back on and the gas turn it on to do more than coffee in the safety of people in respect of people but also because it's something we have to do we need the courage and this is not about support you know we did everything here by ourselves and we'll do it again by ourselves. You've seen how the place needs re renovation and restoration. You've seen the effect of time on it. But the laughter of guests, the sound of plates clicking and glasses cheering, you know, telling a customer, yes, we only have Palestinian wines on our menu try them. Telling a guest, yes, you can eat our meat roll. I'll take you to the butcher tomorrow so you can see it. I think that made people just rethink Palestine totally. But the dr dream is still there. It's still there but in what conditions and in what scenario, I don't know. During the pandemic, I went on cooking and I was lucky to be able to do a lot of stuff. Um, the talk shows, the, the Tata's Kitchen, Sabah Ali Yasmin, writing articles, but it's very different than actually cooking in your restaurant and for me on a personal level when i was a kid i had this dream to be able to open a restaurant and a guest house in an old building in bethlehem and hosh sarian made it possible and i gave it everything i have it was here before guests woke up and I was out after they went to sleep. The hard work we've put, I don't regret anything. The investment of money, of time, I don't regret. But I, would, I really, really, really wish is that the place reopens with the possibility to go on doing our mission. And I think you're all going to be coming to visit us here when we reopen, if we reopen.